Well, welcome everyone to all of you who join us from around the world, actually. My name is Reverend Janet Nohavik. I'm pastor of The Journey Within in Pompton Lakes, New Jersey, just outside of New York City. Uh, the World Council of Spiritualists joins with you in praying and sending healing to all of humanity and our planet at this time. One voice, one prayer together. Take courage, we do stand together. There are many countries that we know are not represented here as well. Um, so if you are joining us from one of those countries where there is a spiritualist organization or a spiritualist, a group of spiritualists, you can contact the World Council so that we can continue to widen our effort on behalf of global spiritualists coming together. Also, there is a link today for everyone participating. If you'd like to donate, um, we are collecting for the World Food, Food Program of the United Nations. And that's at www.wfp.org. So um, hopefully some of you will consider making a donation there. There are so many people in need. So let us begin. Um, Joining us today from all around the planet in one voice, we have representatives from different spiritualist organizations. Um, I'm so excited to be part of this, as I'm sure all of you are as well. So I'm going to invite uh, John Blackwood in, who is a fishing of the Spiritualist National Union uh, from the Edinburgh Association of Spiritualists in Scotland. Morning, John. Well Hello and hi everyone. Uh, it's a delight to be part of this service today and I'm from Edinburgh Association of Spiritualists and delighted to be offering greetings from Scotland so in a lovely sunny day so uh, lovely to be with you. I thought I might start the service today by just allowing us all to join together in prayer so please join with me in prayer. Divine Spirit of infinite love and wisdom, we come to you in prayer, seeking your inspiration and encouragement. We as spiritualists throughout the world unite in prayer as we seek to become more aware of our spiritual understanding and aspire to become known in your likeness. Divine Parent, we yearn for consolation and hope in our time of crisis and need as we pray for your guidance. May you inspire our community to become even more mindful of your presence in our lives as we strive to seek the pleasure in sharing acts of kindness where possible. We know that your love will care and embrace all who are affected by the coronavirus, whether it be in physical or mental health, or indeed offering solace to those in grief. May your divine grace embrace and support them. We, as ambassadors of your message, in being of service to others, pray that your ministering angels will guide us to be steadfast in your mission, in bringing comfort to the lonely, help to the needy, and hope to all. Lord of all that has life, may we be ever conscious of your power to uplift the weary, and give strength to the weak in their times of need. And for all of this, we simply thank you in return. Amen. Thank you, John, for those beautiful words. I invite Celeste Elliott in next. Um, Celeste is a registered medium and board member from Lilydale in Lilydale, New York, USA. Good morning. Thank you. I wanted to give a very, very brief reading from the Tao of Healing, which is center yourself first in wholeness and all parts will be yours. As we begin to remember and understand that we are all a part of the whole, it gives us opportunity to come together and lift each other up in whatever way is needed. The, the outpouring of generosity of healing and love throughout the world that has been shown in the past couple of months and continues has been an incredible healing for the world um, and really shows light and change as we move forward that we are forever changed, but, um, 
but not necessarily for the worse. So thank you for allowing us to be present today. Thank you, Celeste, so much for those beautiful words as well. Bringing one voice again from a different part of the planet is Mia Arison. She's a certificate holder of the Spiritualist National Union, and she's president of Speak of Spirit Spiritualist Organization in Sweden. Welcome, Mia. Thank you. Good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, whatever you are in the world. I thought in this tragical time that I would like to mention a little bit about numerology. And of course, this is my own interpretation of it. But according to the numerology now, we are in the year 2020, and two twos are actually the number four. And the number four stands for work, closed within our frames, and laying groundwork for something new. We are actually building up something new within the limited four walls. Even if we feel isolated today and we can't get out, we can't see friends and family like we used to do, there's something we all share and feel in this corona time. We also feel very limited and we have every opportunity to work out new solutions to the old problems within these four walls. Instead of continuing to destroying the planet, we have actually given it another chance to heal and we have all seen so many signs of it. That at least is something beautiful. The oceans, the air, the animals, the nature. It's amazing really if you think about how the animals now show up when we are out of the way. While every number two in the year 2020 stands for harmony and cooperation, this, I feel, will grow very strongly in this uncertain time. Three, or no, the number two, <laughs> doubt the message that it means that the message are about joining together and finding common new path in harmony rather than in resistance, war, and competitive thinking. Our possible plans and ideas about both a personal and shared future can certainly come through in the next year as the year number five is the next year. And that stands for freedom, development, and change. Then the build-up of what many believe is the beginning of the new order of the world. I don't know, but I believe something good has to come from this horrible thing that has happened. Well, we mustn't forget the zeros, the circles, that will give the whole world with all what it means new opportunities and the new open path for future building new focus and new perspectives. Two zeros are the same as double the development and opportunities. It means very hard work, but we can do it. In the midst of this great world crisis, we already seen a lot of flashes of light. Man searches inward and begins to think about what's important in life. And yes, a lot of us will suffer but we can't change what has happened and it's important to see the future with new eyes and to help and to be in service where we can. If I don't remember, if I remember right or if I don't remember it wrong, they estimate that 265 million people will be starving after this crisis. So if you are a light and in service, you are going to be called upon to serve mankind to help unease the suffering that is happening. I'd be glad that you can be the beacon of light and maybe change someone else's life for the better, because that's what we are supposed to do. To serve and to put our own selfish needs to one side sometimes takes courage, and I hope we are a lot of us who can show courage and strength, because a lot of people will be in need and you are going to be needed. Just let us all have a prayer in our mind for the humankind and for the healing that is going to be needed to the whole of the world. Thank you. Thank you, Mia, for those very moving words. Continuing to light the way from Ireland, we invite Miriam and John Fitzgerald. They're ministers of the Spiritualist National Union of Ireland. Greetings, everybody, from and what is a lovely sunny day here in Ireland uh, as well. Um, greetings from the Spiritualist Unit of Ireland and from all spiritualists uh, in our land. Um, as yes, indeed, we face a challenging time at this point, 
but I feel as it has been shown in other countries, it's brought out the very best in people uh, and unfortunately the worst. Um, as we as spiritualists are always in service, I feel we are called into service even more at this time, not only for healing, um, but when things settle down, we'll be called upon in many more ways uh, to give uh, solace and comfort and support uh, to those in need. Uh, the true meaning of being a uh, proud spiritualist. So as we move forward in these times, um, very much, as I say, a challenge, but also a chance to take stock, not only of ourselves, uh, but also of the planet and everything and everyone that inhabits it. So I feel very much as we take notice of how the world changes, which has been up to now very fast-paced, that a chance to slow down and just a chance, I suppose, in a way to rebirth, to refocus on what our potential and our future lies. So within that, I'd like to introduce my wife, Miriam, please. I'm just going to read, if I may, a, a very short poem uh, entitled Peace. Peace is a gradual process. Each step slowly taken, it's true as we let go of the life that once framed us, coming into a life that is new. Each footstep, our strength grows inside us. Pathways forge out in wild woods, but echoes of thoughts and restrictions, all those could-haves and would-haves and shoulds. Compassion is deep in our being, we breathe, we know, we are one. With each flower, each tree that is living. Part of the great spirit, the one. Each prayer is a calling to listen. And to listen to what we all know. Can we begin again? Let God in. What then? Embrace who we are and let's go. Thank you very much. Thank you for those beautiful words. As we continue to capture this moment among spiritualists around the world, we invite uh, Andre Kurzbaum, spiritualist minister and leader of the NST, the Spiritualist Church of Norway. Welcome, Andre. Yes, good uh, day uh, or good evening to all of you uh, around the world watching this. I have had people coming to me and ask me uh, about uh, the crisis that is now. Is this a push punishment from God, they are asking? Why is this happening to the whole globe? And why in this magnitude that we are experiencing today? And as I tell them that, this is not a punishment from God because God is helping us. God is with us. And God wants to give us a hope and understanding. And that comes to our principles of, of learning. Because when we are incarnated in our lives now, we are here to learn, to experience. And they ask, well, couldn't God help us to make this better and make it easier? In what many, many ways... God does this, but then again, we need to find out what where can we learn from this experience of the virus that is here. How can we learn to get together? If everything were per perfect, as on the other side, there wouldn't be any need to go and incarnate, to come and incarnate. We are here to learn. So we need to see this from a learning perspective. What can I learn? How can I be better to my fellow man? How can I help my fellow man in other worlds? Uh, I mean, in other places in the world, like uh, one of you spoke about the hunger that will come from this or the need that will come from this or all the people that have necessities that are not met today of communication or being together with the loved ones, being together with the family. So I think that this is a time for learning, this is a time for reflection, 
This is a time for hope. This is a time for healing. And it's a time to be closer to God. And that is really what I'm saying to people that is coming and asking, why is this happening? And how can we get some kind of purpose out of what is happening in the world today? Thank you very much. Thank you, Andre. Bringing the voice again from a different part of our planet is Reverend Richard Scholler, NST, Vice President of the International Spiritualist Federation. Welcome, Richard. Thank you. Welcome, Janet. Uh, thank you for having me. Greetings from Huntington, New York, ladies and gentlemen, to all of you. Before I offer a few words, I wanted to share the inspiration that uh, brought these words to me. The other day I was sitting in contemplation and Andrew Jackson Davis came to mind. While walking in the Catskill Mountains of New York, he received inspiration from his guide, Gallen, um, and it was known as the magic staff. Here are the few words of inspiration. Behold, here is thy magic staff. Under all circumstances, keep an even mind. Take it, try it, walk with it, talk with it, lean on it, believe on it forever. In speaking to Andrew Jackson Davis and the Magic Staff and finding ourselves in these times, it is considered times of great discomfort and uncertainty. And we as spiritualists are called to stand strong and tall, to take what we know to be right and true and to use that for the betterment of humanity. Every single one of us are living in that time right now. Every human being, regardless of age, race, gender, religion, or nationality is dealing with COVID-19. As we all know it, it is a global pandemic. We are listening to our government officials and the advisors from our health organizations. We're staying informed and at the same time, we're not allowing ourselves to be overwhelmed with fear based on that information that is being shared. I feel this is a calling to all of us as spiritualists to live more fully into our faith. As spiritualists, we believe in the healing power of spirit. We witness it in our churches and centers through the gifts of hands-on healing and mediumship. Many of us have stepped forward and offered what we can in the way of service at this time, whether it be through online services or simple gifts in the way of acts of kindness and support. As spiritualists, many of us recite principles of, as part of our service. These principles are an affirmation and belief in life's continuity, in our divinity, and how if we live in accordance with natural law, we will experience a sense of happiness and peace. Now more than ever, we're being called to live in accordance with our principles and our beliefs. As we live more fully into our faith, we are expressing what spirit would want and in many ways holding true the sixth principle of the NSAC's Declaration of Principles. We believe that the highest morality is contained in the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Isn't that true that we are noticing the softening of humanity, the healing of the planet, and some beauty in the world despite the pandemic? Here in New York at 7 p.m. each night, the city residents stand out on their balconies and applaud the frontline workers in the medical field. In my little town in Huntington, Long Island, the fire department drove past a local hospital in parade formation with sirens blaring to show support to all of the medical workers. And if I may get personal, even in a simple act of kindness, my grandson turned six just two weeks ago, and all of his friends from the neighborhood brought chalk to his house at different points during the day and wrote on his driveway, and then they had a drive-by parade to show him, hey, happy birthday, buddy. Broadway has had concerts over Zoom to raise funds for A-STEP, which is actors striving to end poverty and for Equity Fights Aid, Broadway's care, Broadway Cares. And we as spiritualists are doing our same part right now as we encourage donations to support the United Nations World Food Program. 
knowing that the spiritual realm is supporting our efforts and all that we can do is to take what we know and be mindful, reason it out, and take the next step towards balance, balancing our internal knowledge with our trust in spirit, remembering that the spiritual realm stands with us as we walk forward into the future. During this time, let us continue to step forward into the future, greeting each day with the same love of spirit, the same desire to serve and uplift humanity. Thank you for allowing me to serve you in spirit. Thank you, Richard, from Huntington, Long Island. Not too far, but far enough, I have to say. Uh, as we continue to bring the voices from around the country and the world, we invite Sarah Jeffrey, president of the Canberra Spiritualist Association in Australia. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you so much, Janet. And for those who don't know Australia, Canberra is the capital, so don't let the Sydney ciders fool you. It's very heartwarming to be gathering together as part of the Brotherhood of Spiritualists, bringing upliftment, solace and healing to the world. Uh, this evening for me, this morning for you, I've put a few words together titled, After. In homes, apartments, shanty towns, cities and rooms, the whole world retreated, a sense of impending doom. Yet Mother Nature continued her vibrant rhythm of life, nonplussed, nonfussed, bemused at humanity's strife. Her winds cleared the air, her waters ran clean. The animals visited places they had never been. The sun continued shining, the earth still turned. The stars kept twinkling as humanity yearned. For a return to the past, the call to make it swift, not recognising the opportunity to pause and to shift. The whole wide world appeared set for collision, yet God had in store a very different vision. Some look back at this time as great reckoning. Others understood the divine plan was beckoning. For in the quiet, the stillness and calm, came the time for reflection and not for alarm. A great collective whisper was gathering pace. It was time to unite and live together in grace. Our souls cried out to stop, just breathe. Be open to listening, ready to receive. For the spirit world was drawing near to remind us of the things that are prized most dear. To reconnect with that within us, our spiritual core. To know what we need is less and not more. Treasures of gold and glitz, trappings of wealth, have no true value when compared to our health. Love and kindness and service our duty to recognise that which holds great spiritual beauty. The mountains, the oceans, the bird song so lyrical, families and friendship, life. That is the miracle. Everything animated by the spark of the divine, all linked together, always entwined. A return to goodwill, a return to connection, to regard one another with love and affection. To each do our best in thought, word and deed, to see the divine no matter the creed. And so it came, great celebrations of relief, yet for many there remained heartbreak and grief. For those who suffered deeply, for the losses they faced, forever more wrapped in the power of spirit's healing embrace. Never to be forgotten, their transition not in vain, our change in direction was the gift of their pain. 
the year of great spiritual shift, remembered as 2020, when we found the answers lay within and lessons were aplenty. We took a new path that followed the divine architect's plan. We finally stood for and together the brotherhood of man. A period in history which started a new chapter when our spirits remembered our happy ever after. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. I'd like to invite in next Dr. Diane Visser from the Mel Melville Spiritualist Church, Sanctuary of Love, South Africa. Thank you, Janet, and thank you that I can be here today to share with you. Um, I've just put a few words down that I'd like to read, if I may. So I sit here with such gratitude in my heart, because to share this moment with each one of you is sacred, and I am blessed. Indeed, we are all blessed to bring our collective energy of love to this platform. We are called by love. This love is the very essence of our being. This love is what allows us to live, to share, to grow, and to experience all facets of life. As we now find ourselves walking on uneven and untrodden paths, the only place we can look to for guidance is within. In her book, Awakening the Energies of Love, Anne Hillman explores a profound theme launched by Pierre Teilhard de Chardin's quote, Someday, after mastering the winds, the waves, the tides, and gravity, we shall harness for God the energies of love. And then for the second time in history of the world, humanity will have discovered fire. Our ancestors' taming of fire symbolizes our species' differentiation from all others. Propelled by a yearning that ran counter to their body's counsel and to the time-tested wisdom of their clan, they took an enormous risk. Instead of running away from fire, they engaged it. Eons later, we find ourselves in another defining era. Our technology links us as a global tribe, while fear and greed has threatened our very existence. Led to listen to our better angels and our expanding consciousness, we are now being challenged to engage our capacities for transformation, the energies of love. We too stand at an evolutionary juncture, a longing to be somehow more than we are. Our longing, our yearning is part and parcel of the sum of the soul, and it has always beckoned us towards a future that is not ours alone. We may choose to follow it by ourselves, but that we follow it matters to generations. For just as the embers of the first fire ignited the power of language, those of the second will ignite the power in our hearts. Thank you for allowing me to share with you. And I wish for each of you that you be safe and blessed. Thank you. Thank you so much. Joining us as well now is Minister Simon James of the Open Doors Sanctuary in Victoria, Canada. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Janet, um, for the wonderful invitation to address uh, the world uh, at this point and to be amongst such esteemed company and to be able to just share a few words with you and to inspire perhaps your own strength, your own inspiration. Greetings as well from the Open Door Spiritual Sanctuary in Canada, where I'm one of the ministers. At the moment, I'm in the UK, so representing two countries. I'd like to share two um, thoughts with you, if I may, today. One is the concept of prayer. We've seen a lot of prayers on social media recently, asking and beseeching the Creator to save us, to come and rescue us. And this, I've always felt, is a really a misunderstanding of the concept of what true prayer is. Because when we constantly ask outside of ourselves to be rescued, we are constantly telling ourselves that we are powerless, that we are weak. 
we are asking the creator to remind us that we need rescuing. And the great outpouring of service that we have seen around the world reminds us that actually humanity is far from weak. We are strength and strong beyond all imagination. And yet we have this idea that we are constantly needing some outside support to bring us back to who we are. The Christian mystic, St. Julian of Norwich, described prayer as the oneness of the soul with God. That is, we draw close to the creator and become one with that divine presence. True prayer is not asking for something, but true prayer is being within all things and knowing that the creator is present. And just to share with you uh, a little more meaning on that, I'd like to just share a short uh, reading from Echoes, Teachings from the Past, Wisdom for the Present by Deborah Skelton. And this was a collection of the pioneering words of spiritualists of the past that were put together uh, in a little more modern English so that we can understand and, and remind ourselves of the great power and beauty that exists within them. And this reading is by Gordon Higginson, who I'm very proud to um, say was one of my teachers and I was one of his students. So this is what Gordon Higginson had to say about prayer. When you pray, you become the prayer. We understand that God is an inner power, not an outside one. When you ask for something in prayer, it is no use expecting an outside power to come along and give you what you've requested. But if you can become your prayer through the sincerity and depth of your thoughts, then you have the answer. Prayer is not all about asking, even when we think that we are asking for the right things. Prayer is listening, communicating, being at one with reality, the reality of God. In prayer, we become our God. And if we listen, we are given the answers, the strength and knowledge to see through our troubles, not from an outside source, but from our inner reality. Prayer crystallizes within you what you are feeling about yourself, about your fellow man and about your God. If you absorb the love of God and spirit, they will be manifest in your prayer. We have all that is needed within us. Let us not pray for strength. Let us be in prayer to know that we are strong beyond all imagination because the spirit is present. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. Joining us as well is from Italy is Daniela Gersavoni, who is a certificate holder of the Spiritualist National Union and president of Spiritus Italia in Italy. Welcome, Daniela. Thank you, Janet. Thank you for inviting me. It's amazing to be here with all of you and to share some truths with so many people. And uh, yes, I'm speaking to you from Italy. And uh, the city where I live is uh, actually the epicenter of this dreadful COVID-19. I live in Bergamo, in Lombardy, and I can grant to you that uh, in the past two months, the only sound you could hear in this surreal silence was the sound of the ambulance. And you think, who will be the next? A friend? A relative? And I, I have to be sincere. In these two months of complete lockdown, I felt fear. I felt sorrow and anxiety and a huge sense of impotence. Exactly the same emotions that millions of people all around the world are feeling now. And so I thought, what can I do? How can I help? Apart from doing my activities, spiritualist activities via the internet and not in the reality. 
but I got the answer and was very easy. It was, the answer was simply live your life accordingly with our principle. And for me, that means uh, to feel the presence of God within us and around us, sharing the brotherhood of man and putting in practice, even from home, love, compassion, tolerance and kindness. In other words, simply being and living as spiritualists. And before leaving you, ladies and gentlemen, I, I would like to share with you a short, very short quote uh, by Silver Birch. There's just few words, but with an incredible power to give us courage and new hope, simply reminding us who we are and the power that we have. It is not when the sun is shining and all is calm and peaceful that life's lessons are learned. It is sometimes in the darkness, in the storm, that the soul comes into its own and begins to express the greatness of which the individual is too often unaware. Thank you very much and a lot of love from Italy. Thank you, Daniela. We welcome next Reverend Angela Mora, who's president of the Spiritualist Church of Canada. Thank you, Angela. Good morning, everyone. The Spiritualist, uh, Spiritualist Church of Canada is very grateful to be part of this healing event this morning. And um, as Janet said, I'm uh, Reverend Angela Mora, and I am the president of the Spiritualist Church of Canada. Today, I represent all Canadian membership, both as individuals and as churches across our 10 provinces and three territories. Today, as Canadian spiritualists, we are part of a larger global family, one world, one voice, one prayer. Knowing that our intentions of love and healing that are being spoken of today and being sent out today will help all on many levels. And as we progress individually and as a group, we know that it is through the energy of loving kindness that we will help each other. We also know that our thoughts support all the anxious and the fearful ones who are un feeling unsettled at this moment. May our love of each other lift them up to understand that nothing is separate from the other. I too have some words of Sh Silver Birch that I would like to share this morning. No time that is spent in the desire for spiritual attainment is ever wasted. You wait very patiently. I know, but I want you to realize that the great progress continues all the time. The bonds of unity between us are being strengthened and there is a quickening in the perception of your own soul powers. Growth, unfoldment and evolution are taking place. The greater manifestations of the spirit are not in uh, their outward expression, but in the quickening of the inner response, in the closer union between the unfolding spirit and the powers which seek to use it. Whether manifestations of the spirit is seen or heard does not matter. What is more important is the unfoldment of your own soul's power. For as you sit here week after week, so you are attuning yourselves to higher vibrations and becoming more accessible to the wisdom of your ages. 
And as your souls unfold and you rise higher and higher in the scale of vibrations, so you too come into closer contact with the higher and the greater spiritual forces that are not seen or heard, but which belong to the eternal realities of spirit. This is the reality of your lives. So much of your time is spent in chasing the shadows in trying to capture this illusion in trying to secure the uh, ephemeral of, in the silence. We find the harmony and in love, our souls unfold all the time. Though it may be slow, it is <clears throat> sure and it is certain. I just want to share with you some words that were written by Bill Withers in a song called Lean On Me. Sometimes in our lives, we all have pain, we all have sorrow, but if we are wise, we know that there's always tomorrow. Lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be your friend, I'll help you carry on. For it won't be long till I'm going to need somebody to lean on. And as spiritualists in the incoming, upcoming days, as we move forward, we all will lean on each other and show God's light and his love for us all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Angela. It's my honor as well to introduce Minister David Bruton, President of the Spiritualist National Union. On behalf of the Spiritualist National Union, I would like to send our sincere good wishes to everyone taking part and attending here today and all of the spiritualist organizations and communities you represent at this difficult time for all of humanity. When spiritualists work together, great things are possible. Next week here in the United Kingdom, we mark Healing Awareness Week which is organized by a group called the Healing Forum. Four national healing organizations who collectively represent many thousands of spiritual healers and complementary therapists, all working tirelessly to help others. Healing, as we know, is a potent and very wonderful force for good in our world. When one healer steps forward, and makes a link with spirit to deliver help to another soul. It is always such a special experience. But if today we can multiply that energy many fold, as the healing power of the spirit resonates around our world, many lives will be touched. Together, just think what we can achieve. Together, just think how many people we can reach. Together, just think of that collective energy for good, which will bring peace of mind and freedom from pain into the lives of our brothers and sisters across all continents. Such is the power of healing in our world. The message of spiritualism is needed so much as at this time. As we know, many thousands of souls have taken their transition at the hands of COVID-19, and so often leaving family and friends to grieve their physical loss. And in many cases, those people have been robbed of the opportunity to say their final goodbye to the ones they love, leaving them to take their transition without the reassurance of a family member physically present to hold their hands. Such is the cruelty of this virus. Together we can make a difference. Together we can provide a greater insight into the reality of life in this world and all the potential the next world holds, not just for a chosen few, but rather for all humanity. May the pure light of peace illumine your soul. 
May the sense of a greater direction bring deeper purpose to your day. May a deeper intent bring strength to your resolve to do good for others. May the healing touch calm your being and bring rest to your physical frame. May that same power bring calm and peace to our world. May the hope of a brighter tomorrow always urge you forward to the potential that only tomorrow can hold for each one of us. And may the omnipresence of God bring you a fulfillment that surpasses the doubts that sometimes flicker across your mind. May sorrow be transformed to joy and that same joy illumine our world of matter, touched as always by the power of the Spirit. Through truth, light and nature, may we find expression in all aspects of our lives of that greater power. And may the blessings of God illumine our path onward into eternity. Thank you, David. Thank you for those beautiful words. I'd like to invite Reverend Christine Cathartes, President of the National Spiritualist Association of Churches in the United States. Good morning, Janet and fellow panelists. Thank you, Janet, for organizing this gathering throughout the world for all of us. I bring you greetings from the churches and members of the National Spiritualist Association of Churches in the United States. When a pebble meets a pond, the pebble is felt by the entire pond. The water is most severely churned at the point of entry. There is chaos cast upon what once was quietude and serenity. Eventually, the pebble sinks to the bottom, comes to rest, and the bedlam becomes a memory. Tranquility is restored. Today we are being tossed about by the tumultuous waters of a great pandemic. When the waters are furious, spiritualists know to meet that ferocity with serene cognition. We know to draw upon the quietude that comes from our deepest nucleus. Some call this the God spark within us. We are reminded of the foundational words all spiritualists embrace. Keep an even mind. Fire is not quelched by fire. No, it is the opposite that must be drawn upon to suppress the flames. Now more than ever, ever, our dependence on one another and connection with our earthly home has come blazing to the forefront. We must all do our part to help quiet the global fury that ravages the bodies and minds of humanity. We must meet pain with soothing bombs of compassion. We must meet fear with veritable knowledge. As spiritualists, we must stand as pillars of strength, leading confidently by example. We know God and spirit are eternally with us. Let us pray. Infinite intelligence, great source of all, we come to you in gratitude for the understanding spiritualism brings us. Through the tenets of spiritualism, we know life is never lost. We will continue to live long after our physical bodies are spent. We can connect with our loved ones both here and hereafter. Millions of us have joined with you in the Summerland. Those who remain shoulder the heavy burdens of loss, physically, economically, and some, unfortunately, even spiritually. Spiritualists the world over will stand steadfast in the principles we declare. 
Where there is grief, we will comfort. Where there is loss, we will help. Where there is doubt, we will promulgate knowledge. Today, spiritualists stand worldwide, united, strong, and prepared to serve. We celebrate you for the everlasting guidance and sacred knowledge that you have bestowed upon us. We know that you are the eternal source and provider of all that is. And so today, and for all days forward, we remain grateful. As we say, there is no death, there are no dead, forever and always. Amen. Thank you so much, Christine. It's my privilege and honor as well to Reverend, uh, introduce Reverend Mavis Batilla, an officiant of the Spiritualist National Union, who is joining us from England. Hello, everyone. It's a privilege to be here and to listen to all our opinions and ideas and philosophy and see how we have created something that we can each share a part. We are all part of one stupendous whole whose body nature is but God the soul. And as we come together, bringing our philosophy, bringing our truths, bringing our awareness, bringing our understanding, goodness gracious me, the power of the human spirit. We're seeing that, the power of the human spirit. When we look at the people that are helping those who are sick and in need, when we look at the people who are actually putting their lives on hold in some cases, how do they do that? They do that because of the power of the human spirit, that God source within that calls to them in the quiet of their mind, be still and know that I am with you and go forth and know I will be there. When we look and we think about the ministry of angels, goodness gracious me, you can imagine the sound in the world of the spirit. You can imagine the guides and inspirers, those with higher callings, higher understanding, that are reaching out, touching the earth, planting seeds within our mind that we will continue to go forward with faith and with confidence, but with knowledge knowledge that we are not alone. Residing deep from in our being is the great spirit coming forth from the other world are the spirits of our family, our friends, our ancestors. And imagine all the different elements that are taking place in that other world to support the healing that's taking place. Look at the wonderful words that have been spoken this day, this special day, a day of miracle, a day of transmitting our thoughts one to another, trying to help in these times of fear and uncertainty. The brotherhood of man, what is the brotherhood of man? It's that thread of the God source that resides deep within our being. We cannot experience life here, nor life hereafter, without that power of the great spirit that gives us the strength and the courage to walk on. Wherever we go, you and I, when we look into the eyes of another, we may feel their pain, but we can shine the light from our eyes of God. When we touch another human being, we allow the healing presence of God to flow. When we sit in the quiet, not asking for anything, but just knowing that we are a channel of God's peace that flows through us. For you and I, 
who are aware of life after death and know that we can communicate with those beings in the unseen world and that we can find the opportunity to actually become optimistic and strong and create, creative. But we can also do something else. We can give people our courage. We can let people know that our faith in the ministry of angels is so strong that we know thy will be done on earth is taking place at this moment. No one can go to the world of the, uh, of the spirit alone. So we know that there have been angels gathering. And even though our friends and family may seem alone when they leave this earth, you and I know that they don't, that there will have been a gathering and that indeed they have been welcomed home. They have been taken loved and embraced when they entered that other world. And when our doctors and nurses and scientists are fatigued beyond our imagination, what is the power that moves them? The power of our ability to transfer that flow, that flow, that power, linking, giving healing, helping. It's very important for you and I at this time, for we are needed. We're needed in so many ways, keeping ourselves in faith, in confidence, but also to keep ourselves knowing this too shall pass and it will pass. It will not pass because man said it should. It will pass because the great spirit will be there during the whole period. And we can rest in that. We can know. And we can keep our minds strong. And I'd like to read you something um, that I, we've, Jean and I have adapted from a musical called Time. I love musicals. Um, and it's, it wasn't very successful, this. It was in the 70s, and it wasn't successful. But I just love this one song in it. And I can't sing, so don't expect me to sing to you, will you? Because you'll be in trouble. You'll switch off immediately. But it goes like this, and it's called The Theme from Time. Stand before me on the sign of infinity, all you of the earth. In these times of uncertainty comes the application for change. I will give you the key. And with this knowledge, please realize, comes the responsibility of sharing it. I will show you the way. It's very simple. Throughout the universe, there is order in the movement of the planets, in nature, and in the functioning of the human mind. A mind that is in its natural state of order is in harmony with the universe. And such a mind is timeless. Your life is an expression of your mind. You are the creator of your own universe. For as a human being, oh, there is great power there. It can be a blessing or a curse. It's entirely up to you. For the quality of your life is brought about by the quality of your thinking. Think about that. Thoughts produce action. Look at what you're thinking. Are you positive, optimistic, trusting in God, the great spirit? Realize that the one thing you have absolute control over is your attitude of mind. See the effect it has on those around you. 
for each life is linked to all life and your words carry with them a chain reaction like a stone that's thrown into a pond. If your thinking is in order, your words will flow directly from your heart, creating ripples of love. If you really want to change our world, my friend, we must change our thinking. Reason is our greatest tool. It creates an atmosphere of understanding which leads to caring, which is love. Choose your words with care. Go forth with love. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mavis. Joining us from South Africa is Lionel Lowen. He's a teacher of the Spiritualist National Union and former president of the International Spiritualist Federation. Welcome, Lionel. South Africa, and thank you so much. It's such a privilege uh, to be with you uh, today when we face such challenging times. And I'd just like to share some thoughts that I wrote down uh, a little while ago uh, while um, being in isolation as we have been for the last six weeks. And it's called, what does it all mean? We are at war is what they said. I couldn't understand. Where were the bombs, the guns, the sirens wailing loud? No blackout, no conscription, no martial marching band, and no troops are striding with shoulders broad and proud. Who is it we're fighting? That's what we sought to know. Where do we find the enemy? Whose fingers on the trigger? Putin, Donald, Ayatollah, or that Kim who so gung ho? But none of these were mentioned. It was difficult to figure. This foe is quite invisible. It's a virus, so they say. You cannot tell when it will strike. You pass it on unsung. It came from bats, they tell us. Not those at Lord's in May. But at its worst, it steals your breath. You need an iron lung. Every night the news is full of stats and tales of woe, and governments say, stay at home to keep this beast at bay. The schools are closed, the bars, the clubs. You fear your job will go. Some say, good, some not enough. Most just hope and pray. But wait a while. There's another side, and one we can't ignore. Peace has descended. All is calm. No barking dogs, no builders. We are reading, painting, knitting. It's true of rich and poor. And what is more, we're spending time getting to know our children. Some say, it's the Earth's revenge for exploiting it so badly. Others, it's God's punishment for cruelty, greed and sin. Rationalists won't hear of this. It's nonsense, they say, gladly. The cause is down to humankind. So we, the war, must win. In every war, the heroes shine. Rising over what's mundane, they give their all. Forsaking self, sacrifice their life for others. Nurses, doctors, all staff in health provision, each of whom attain the highest levels of devotion to their sisters and their brothers. We salute you all. We thank you too. You're forever, we are forever in your debt. Long hours, 
few comforts, and despite the fear that you must feel, you comfort, tend, and reassure. Great skills display each day, and yet we cannot show enough how much we value you. Our gratitude is real. Sadly, some are taken from us. They pass all on their own. Because loved ones can't be there, husband, daughter, son, or wife, you can be sure unseen ones are there, and no one dies alone. The grave does not destroy our love for those who shared our life. The peace and calm we feel all round could bring us all so much. Look within, know who you are, find inner strength and joy. Being alone is not loneliness, and deep inside we'll find such wonders. Why neglect this stillness like a child's abandoned toy? It's a chance to look around, see anew with wondering eyes, watch the flowers bud, blossom, blow, and marvel at their hue. Be still and learn the world's a magic place, a living paradise. Before this time we rushed around. Is that something now we rule? Go out at night, away from lights, look up and fill your vision. There is the light from stars and suns that left there long ago. Worlds galore in grand display, arrayed with such precision. Now not too busy to watch this show, God's heavens all aglow. Did all these worlds and suns appear by merest chance? Or is this panoply a proof to those who really see of mind and grand design? No human brain can grasp the scale or calculate its breadth. A mystery beyond our ken, a source of wonder, awe, and beauty so sublime. We miss our friends, the social round, the pint down at the pub. The kids are home and drive you mad with question and their chatter. But life is change. We must adapt. Change too. Now there's the rub. All's not bad. Things were wrong before. Perhaps now they, that need not matter. When it's all over, we have a chance to change things for the better, to take the lessons being learned, transform ourselves and others. We've rediscovered so much we've missed. Let's cast off the fetter of habit, work together, friends, sisters, brothers, fathers, mothers. Corona appertains to crowns. Let's use what we've learned and crown our efforts in this dreadful time with care, respect, and love for all. Upon life's path, let's shine love's light so joy deletes the frown. There's so much good that can emerge, so let's all stand up tall. Thank you. Lionel. People are requesting, if possible, if you have shared a poem, uh, particularly today, if you could forward it and we would, if you're willing, we would share that on the uh, World Council of Spiritualists uh, Facebook because uh, there's such moving words. Um, I'd just like to close with the healing prayer. We ask this great unseen healing force to remove all obstructions from our minds and our bodies, and to restore us all, including our planet, to perfect health. We ask this in all sincerity and honesty, 
and we will do our part. We ask this great unseen healing force to help those present and absent ones who are in need of help, and to restore them to perfect health. We put our trust in the love and the power of God. This concludes our gathering, which has truly moved me, I have to say, being with this representation of spiritualists from around the world. As we come to a close, Please know that by tomorrow, hopefully this will be uploaded so you may share it to your individual groups. It was certainly moving for me. Um, and I thank you all for taking your time, all of those who have joined us from around the planet. As we come together, truly there is power in our thoughts and words. And may our actions and our deeds move forward. May we be a healing bomb for the planet that you and I are ambassadors on at this time. May that we know that the great spirit, which we know to be love, he felt deeply for all of those who share our words today. May love and love be the guiding words always. Blessings upon each of your day. Thank you for being with us, everyone here. There are many words of gratitude in our chat room if you'd like to stay to watch that as we bring this service to an end in gratitude to the great spirit that allowed us to come together in this way as we isolate. Blessings, everyone.